So I have served on the Fargo School Board for the last eight years, two terms, and um, it was time to make that decision, right? Uh, it was the right time. So for a lot of reasons, I'm a Fargo native. I grew up on the north side of Fargo. I've lived in the middle of town and I've also lived on the south side of town. I am invested in Fargo. I have three kiddos I want to desire to stay or to come back um, at some time in their, in their adult life. And um, so there are many, many reasons. It is a vibrant city. We have a really good future. Um, lots of um, changes and activities happening now. I mean, you can see with the vast interest of 15 people running for a city commission that it is really an exciting time for Fargo. So there are lots of reasons. Those are just my top level. Ah, well, it seems like that is a question that is being asked by everyone, right? Uh, should it change, should it not? And without really having, you know, polling uh, at this level, really, uh, how how does it? I, I, for me, it's just really about this is who I am. This is, I, I feel like it hasn't, I guess, is the short answer. Um, I just want to reach as many people as possible with the message. I want to listen. I want to understand. I want to be their voice. And I, I've taken that approach really through the last eight years of my service on the board as well. Really, um, you know, we took an oath uh, when we were elected uh, to uphold the Constitution and, and really represent people. And we're elected at large on the Fargo School Board, just as we are on the city. And so I think that for me, it doesn't change anything. Approval voting, does, it doesn't change anything for me. So in everything that I've read about the right size in terms of a board, Fargo School Board, there's nine of us. I honestly think that's too many. Um, it's too much of an opportunity for some to sort of sit back, right? And let maybe a few uh, do the heavy lifting. And everything, like I mentioned, everything that I've read in terms of research and data, five to seven is about the right size of a, at least school board. I would support maybe a ward system when it comes to whether it's school board or city commission as well. But size wise, you know, I, I think five is an okay number. Really, I, I would support maybe seven, but I think that, I think we're, and Fargo is definitely growing, so it would be a conversation I'd be willing to have and listen. I wanna hear both sides of that, and who's advocating for it, who isn't. Uh, but I, I do think that uh, award system is something I would support, yes. <music> So that's part of the conversation, right? I think that is important. And that's so I like to make decisions based on um, data and based on evidence. And so if we were to, you know, really welcome in all of the stakeholders to say, are we being representative of the community? And if not, why not? And how can we then effectively make that change to do so? And if that means that we have to add a few, if that's actually a solution to reach the goal, certainly I want to have that conversation. Uh, and be open to that. I think honestly, it should be left to the voters. Um, I think we, we need to engage people in that process and, and really listen. And, and again, I really need to feel like the evidence supports that that is a positive. <laughs> I do think we should divide Fargo into wards um, because th there is opportunity, right? and I think even prior to me running, everyone lived north of 32nd, I think, or pretty close. And so do we have representation or there's you know, potential, even being elected at large, and we've seen it on the school board too. Be prior to my run on the school board, uh, almost every member was really north side and like middle of town and north side there really wasn't representation way south you know in terms of someone being on the board that lived way south so i do think it is important uh, and that's why i would support wards to just ensure that we are that we do have a voice now i still feel like as a representative i'm here for all of fargo and and i should care about all of fargo and what happens in you know the overarching the big plan for the city should matter to every single person sitting up there uh, but i do think uh, that it is reasonable to say we should at least have a representative 
um, you know, to ensure that voice from each area of town. Well, I mean, there are many examples. We're not, we wouldn't be the first city that had wards, right? So again, I think it would really be taking a look at the evidence that we have available to us, what is considered a best practice uh, and, and start from there. And then what is, you know, what is it that Fargo envisions for Fargo? Because that's important too. What is important to the people here? And, and then make the plan, uh, draw the lines in that way. Um, because fair and represent, like you want to represent people, but is are 100% of people ever going to agree that one thing or another is fair? But now could we get everyone to agree that's reasonable? You know, I think with the right education and the right involvement in terms of doing our job in educating and facilitating those conversations to happen, sure, I think we can get there. Again, there's got to be best practices out there, right? And I mean, this can't be a unique challenge uh, because it's not the first time. It wouldn't be. If we had wars, it wouldn't be the first time that they existed, right? And so there are pros and cons to every single approach. And I think really being awareness and education are the top two ways of co combating anything like that. And um, so if it's it's about professional development and training and ongoing training of board members. It, that is a reasonable thing to do to just make sure that that is always top of mind. Um, and it is that this is our baseline. This is our foundation. This is the expectation. Uh, I do think that it is our responsibility absolutely as individuals to disclose it and that it is reasonable then to say, okay, does the elected body, do they then think you should still participate or not? Because if you don't have that and you change the rules in that, I'm assuming you're asking on the flip side, if I don't have to disclose it, but somebody else has to point it out, then could we run into a situation where on every single issue someone is saying, wait, I think you have a conflict of interest. No, I think you have a conflict of interest. You know, and so I think that is really why the intent, why it is the way it is today. Now, what if someone doesn't, someone discloses it, the board says, well, I still think you have a conflict. Uh, but they don't agree. That individual doesn't agree they have a conflict and they still get to participate. That is where I think the challenge comes in, <laughs> you know? How do you handle that? Again, I do think that there should be some accountability. And, and you know, the law allows for there to be some accountability, but I think most of that is really under civil penalty um, more than anything. And that's a bit r tough, too, because then we expect our public, really, to take on that when we should have had some safeguards in place to really say. So do I think there could be a better process, a tighter process? Yes, like in our circumstance, this is within the last few years. Do I think we should have been able to take it to the Attorney General and say, can you weigh in on this? But you can't, you know? And um, so that there could be that one more step uh, to just say, we wanna make sure to protect either you know the decision of that particular board member to make sure that if we are not all in a 100% agreement that at least we get a second opinion you know so that we can level set and we can say okay well we we did we went to the next authority and said is this in your opinion a conflict or not and then move on from there and i think that would satisfy or it, not only just the board to, that we were all feeling like we're doing the right thing, but also the citizens, you know? So I, I think that would be reasonable. I wish that there was a place that there was that opportunity. <laughs> but what do the citizens say? They say oh, that's bad. Our school board meetings are every other, well, second and fourth actually, Tuesday, not necessarily every other, and they're at 530. Um, and if you leave too big of a gap, right? Well, then does that make it harder for public to come? You know, I mean, really, you want to be able to, to make it um, accessible at reasonable times for people. And, and I think for at least from our perspective, that's why it's the end of the day. Uh, and, uh, and now there are a variety of, well, 
I mean, people have to come. It's not like they can call in. They can't really access it in any other way. I mean, the city, ours are on YouTube and the city is live streamed, but I don't think that's true of every single subdivision, you know. Uh, so, so there is access maybe that way that could be improved uh, for other boards, but your question specific to city commission on Monday, every other at 5 p.m., if there's a better time, you know, ah, let's talk about it. Uh, it's probably been that way for a really long time. And I haven't heard the public say, to me at least, they wish it was a different time, but I'd be certainly willing to listen if, uh, if that was the case. So simple majority vote, yeah, home rule charter stuff, for sure. Constitutional amendments, different story. I do think for locality, like school boards, city, uh, commission, county, park. I absolutely think three terms is a reasonable amount of time. You know, these are four-year terms. So really, I mean, t if you're on the board for 20 plus years, I, the, only, the only pushback that I have heard people say is, well, what about um, that institutional knowledge? Well, as leaders, isn't it our job to also be mentoring individuals? We are not going to be in these positions forever, or we shouldn't be. <laughs> I don't think, you know, some of, we have careers that are a long time too, but they're not forever. And so it's our job to be making sure that we're passing on that institutional knowledge too. And, and so I really, I really do think that, that uh, for a variety of reasons, absolutely, I think term limits are important. <music> I can tell you from my experience on the Fargo School Board, uh, those that are putting in the work, like that are actually, it, it can be a full-time job, absolutely. And a school board member gets paid $12,000 a year. <laughs> so you're not in these jobs making a living that you can live on, right? Like $12,000. Easiest answer is yes, I think they should be full-time jobs. And that also ties into your earlier question around the number and the right size. So I would like, I would advocate for a smaller number on the school board. We have nine. The city commission only has five, I mean, right? Um, and so if you could pay them full-time positions, I absolutely think that you would open the door to more people being able to run for these positions. And I think that's important. Um, and so there's a variety of positive things that could be a result of really making them kind of a full-time job um, and, uh, and adjusting the pay accordingly. <music> That's a good question. Um, you know, typically like a school board task force, we don't compensate for those. Now, if there's an employee sort of driven um, task force or an employee committee, I should say, they sometimes, not always, are compensated. But I do also think that it is really important as I feel like part of that is our civic duty, you know? And so I, I love that we reach out and, and get people to engage in these in a variety of ways. And would it change that if we're paying versus not paying? I don't know. Um, so, you know, to be honest, I, it's not like I've, I, I don't know that I have a really strong answer on that. I could, I, it would be one of those those questions that I would like more uh, input from people on before I had a really solid answer for you on that. Yeah, I think so, absolutely. I, I, I think that there should be full transparency um, and limits and absolutely, because I think that I mean, we've all heard stories of how it can get out of control, <laughs> right? And um, so I don't see why not. So I think education campaigns for sure um, need to happen on a variety of, of topics. And we do it in some areas and not so good in others. Um, but I think that that is number one. I, I think there's an opportunity there. There's a gap there on certain things. Um, 
voting I mentioned earlier, I think that's one of them, right? I get a lot of questions around approval voting and the difference and what does it mean and where can you point someone, right? Um, so I think education is key. We need to get the message to people. And all too often I hear organizations or and school board and they'll say, well, it's on our website. Well, you're asking people to come find it. What more can we do, because there is more, that we can do to do outreach and to really we're pushing out the information and strategically and to, you know, making sure that we're reaching a, a wide variety of people, hopefully everyone. But, you know, we need to do that and vary our, our technique to be able to do that. You can't just put it on a website and say, well, it's all there. That's my opinion. Um, so, so I think that that's where it starts. The simplest answer is, is the state's not going to solve it for us. The government isn't going to solve it for us. Your local leaders, like you're, you need to pay attention. We all need to pay attention to our local leaders, our local races, because they are affecting our, outside of what happened in the last two years, right? They are affecting our lives every single day, right? The decisions that they make. So we need to be engaged. We need to understand. We need to pay attention. Um, and over and above that, yes, do I believe then in local control? Absolutely, because you don't want the state and the federal government coming in trying to tell you what to do. Then think that they know what's best for the citizens here of Fargo, North Dakota. Absolutely, I believe in local control. So that's the simple answer. I think what complicates it is what's happened over the last couple of years, right? Where things got really muddy. Uh, <laughs> and, and so that is kind of another conversation. You can go to jenniferbensonforfargo.com, web, my website, and, um, or you can email me at jenniferbensonforfargo at gmail.com. <laughs>